thank you, President Trump, for making this beautiful evening happen. And now I would like to introduce our first speaker, a very special woman, someone who I have gotten to know through the years. You have gotten to know her, you fellow South Dakotans. She is a leader consistently challenging the status quo and working to make her state stronger for the next generation. She's a lifelong South Dakotan, and from the time she could walk, she worked beside her dad on the ranch. I love her too. In college, she married Brian, another South Dakota farm kid. She first got involved in politics after her father's tragic death, serving as a citizen legislator in the South Dakota State Legislature from 2007 to 2010, before serving South Dakota in the U.S. House of Representatives from 2011 to 2018. She recently gained national attention for her response to national events, including COVID-19, protests, and efforts to rewrite American history. And maybe even more importantly, she often says that her greatest accomplishment is raising three children who love the Lord, love their family, and know how to work hard. Would you please give it up for the wonderful governor of South Dakota, Christy Nome. Good evening. You all look so good. Wow, thank you for coming. Mary, you are just absolutely wonderful. Aren't we proud of Mary Hart? So, I understand there's a lot of South Dakotans here. Who's here from South Dakota? <laughs> How many of you here tonight, it's your very first visit to South Dakota? Yeah. Thank you for coming. That means the world to me. Say, tonight we have a very special guest with us. Um, we have um, the 174th Cyber Protection Unit is with us here tonight. Could they please stand? <laughs> Folks, uh, these soldiers were deployed for 13 months uh, as a part of Operation Enduring Freedom, and they never got a welcome home. So we decided to throw a big party tonight and officially welcome them home and thank them for their service. Would you give them a round of applause? Thank you for your service. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fantastic evening planned for you. And let me start by introducing someone that has been absolutely instrumental to making tonight happen. It is my honor to introduce David Bernhardt, who is the United States Secretary of the Interior. He was raised in a rural town of Rifle, Colorado, which I've actually elk hunted there. So fantastic elk and rifle. Secretary Bernhardt grew up hunting and fishing on public lands. He also has legal, policy, and administrative experience. He served nearly a decade in senior level positions at the department, including as solicitor and deputy secretary. Under his leadership, the Interior Department has expanded access to public lands. They've advanced American energy independence, strengthened the departmental ethics program, and also delivered billions of dollars in regulatory relief to beginning since the very beginning of the Trump administration. We are also honored to have his wife, 
Jenna here this evening with us, as well as his daughter, Katie. So ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in welcoming the United States Secretary of the Interior, David Bernhardt. Good evening. Thank you, Governor. It is great to be in South Dakota. Over a decade ago, fireworks illuminated the sky over this memorial, a place that honors our former presidents. Tonight, they return. Tonight's celebration would not have been possible without the leadership of President Trump and Governor Nome. They called for a patriotic celebration and an incredible firework display here at Mount Rushmore. Mr. President, First Lady, Governor, members of Congress, and other guests, welcome to Mount Rushmore. This magnif magnificent monument, surrounded by the beauty of the Black Hills of South Dakota, tells the story of the birth, the development, and the preservation of our incredible nation. Few places are more central to the collective American identity than Mount Rushmore. Overlooking us are George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Teddy Roosevelt. These great leaders forged our great nation and preserved it. The Department of the Interior's National Park Service is entrusted as the steward and the guardian of our national parks, monuments, and battlefields, all of which tell American story. This story includes moments of great triumph, as well as setbacks and challenges. Reflecting upon these moments in our history provides solace, rejuvenation, and inspiration to all of us. Please join me in giving a hand of thanks to the wonderful employees of our National Park Service, and particularly those here at Rushmore, Mount Rushmore who have worked tirelessly to put this event on. Thank you. Now, they're awesome. Now, as we are under the gaze of Teddy Roosevelt, I cannot help but note that it was through President Roosevelt's leadership and resolve that we were able to enjoy the public lands and experience our national parks. And it is in Roosevelt's conservation spirit that earlier this year, President Trump called on Congress to pass a historic agreement investing in our public lands. Last month, the Senate passed legislation that he called for. And later this month, we expect Congress will approve legislation to provide our national parks and pub public lands with the most significant investment in generations so that our children and grandchildren can fully enjoy the splendors of sites like Mount Rushmore. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, on this day in 1776, John Adams described his vision of how we should celebrate our nation's independence. He said it should be marked with pomp and parade with show, shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of the continent to the other. 244 years later, President Trump fosters Adams' vision, even in times of challenge. Adams recognized, it's pretty awesome, Adams recognized that our Independence Day would bring American people together. By doing so, we can each reflect on and appreciate the principles and freedoms that bind us together to make America the greatest nation on the planet. Thank you, and God bless America. Thank you, Secretary Bernhardt, and thanks to your entire team. This was no small feat pulling off this evening's uh, 
events, and you guys were just absolute rock stars in helping us get it accomplished. It is so good to be with all of you tonight. I just appreciate you coming and helping us celebrate our Independence Day. We have been working since before I was even sworn in as governor to get to this night tonight. Uh, in fact, uh, when we had the ticket system set up, we had over 125,000 people sign up in a three-day period to get to be one of the 7,500 people that are sitting here tonight in these seats for this celebration. Congratulations to all of you that are here in place. You know, whether you're visiting one of our largest cities or our smaller towns, South Dakota is a state that prides itself on the close-knit nature of our communities. Tonight, if you look to your left, if you look to your right, you're going to see that this crowd isn't just from South Dakota, but it's from everywhere across this nation. We just appreciate you coming, and we know that this is a celebration. Across America these last several weeks, we have been witnessing a very troubling situation unfold. In real time, we are watching an organized, coordinated campaign to remove and eliminate all references to our nation's founding and many other points in our history. You know, rather than looking to the past to help improve our future, some are trying to wipe away the lessons of history, lessons that we should be teaching to our children and to our grandchildren. This approach focuses exclusively on our forefathers' flaws, but it fails to capitalize on the opportunity to learn from their virtues. Make no mistake, this is being done deliberately to discredit America's founding principles by discrediting the individuals who formed them so that America can be remade into a different political image. Tonight, tonight I want to invite you all and those around the country watching The founding generation has important things to tell us about America's past, its present, and its future. Remember, our independence was the result of many stars aligning, including a unique assembly of powerful writers, gifted thinkers, and tremendous generals. And don't forget, they were supported by a simple citizen army that defeated the world's most powerful empire. Against all odds and incredible struggle, we can find examples of perseverance, dedication, and commitment to certain fundamental truths. These men did not stage a revolt against the Kingdom of Great Britain for personal gain or for personal power. They did it because they knew they had to in order to defend their rights to live, work, and worship as they saw fit. You know, following the British defeat, we could have had a king, but instead, we had a man who walked away from his position as commander-in-chief, and then he also walked away from the presidency. These examples, like so many others, rarely make the cut when looking back on their lives, but they undoubtedly serve as an illustration of all that Americans should emulate. Now, towards this effort, the signers of the Declaration of Independence pledged their lives and their sacred honor. The Declaration is arguably one of the most important statements of purpose ever written not just because it serves as a justification for our independence to the entire world, but also because it has led to our prosperity and inspired many other nations and peoples to seek freedom. These words are not remembered nearly enough today. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Let us never forget, especially today, that our government, Let us never forget that today, that our government has the power that it does because the people have consented to it. 
We have consented specifically to a government that will serve all of us equally and that it will protect and uphold the fundamental rights enumerated by our Constitution. It is our duty to renew our commitment to these ideals and to pass them on to those who come after us. These ideals cannot be dismissed as the irrelevant opinions of flawed men. Our founders had their flaws, certainly, but to use those flaws to condemn their ideals is unjust and self-defeating. How many of us have lived up to our own ideals? Without the words, the ideals, and the sacrifices of these few, the world would not have a ringing example of true freedom. We can speak and write, worship, work, defend ourselves, and even protest as we see fit because of these men and their ideals. To attempt to cancel the founding generation is an attempt to cancel our own freedoms. Now, The rich and beautiful lands on which many of us live and in which we're now standing today are the result of men and women searching for more. At times, especially today, it seems like we're often paralyzed by the present and we're defeatist about the future. Our country was founded by dissidents and people seeking to make a better life for themselves and for their children. People all over the world continue to flock to America today. The simple reason is that it is our commitment to the ideals that were laid out by our forefathers. The struggle to maintain the Union was about the proposition that America must live up to the principles articulated in the Declaration. And America's rebirth allowed a fuller realization of the fundamental purposes of government articulated in the Declaration. In 1862, a simple question was put before Congress. Can we do better? Our choice was clear. We could either nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope on Earth. The way is plain, peaceful, generous, just, a way which, if followed, the world will forever applaud. The men and women who built this country envisioned an America that would project a positive influence throughout the world, to spread the values of the rule of law, optimism, and liberty to places that had not known them. They also took on the mission of protecting the natural wonders of the West, something all of us sitting here tonight can be thankful for. In particular, I think many of us especially those of us that are on the political front lines, would be wise to remember. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with the cold and timid souls who neither knew victory or defeat. Boy, you'd be hard-pressed to find a more appropriate quote to guide leaders today. Leadership requires wisdom, a will to act, and the confidence to stand up for what's right. Our love for America and our commitment to stand for the principles that make America unique deserves to be applauded. We honor these men and women for their contributions, their leadership, all the positive things that they represent, the things that make America unique, and call us to live up to our promises. This Independence Day, let us be grateful that we have such words and such examples to follow, and that others were willing to sacrifice so much to create a land in which liberty and law can be protected. Let us not destroy history. Let us learn from it by preserving and imitating what is good about it. We are all We are all committed to a country where any person, regardless of their standing at birth, can make anything of themselves. This applied to me. I was just a farm kid. Now I'm the first female governor of South Dakota. But it applies to everyone else, too. Let us, like our founding fathers, pledge our own lives, our fortunes, our sacred honor, 
to the cause of liberty and self-government so that we may continue to have the freedom to follow our conscience, to build our lives, and to live in peace. Now, I want to introduce someone who understands precisely what it means to brave the dangers of the arena. Someone who strives valiantly, who knows great enthusiasms, who spends himself in a worthy cause, and who has firmly and repeatedly stated his commitment to place Americans, American liberty, American safety, and the American Constitution before anything else. I am talking, I am talking, of course, about President Donald Trump. Mr. President, Mr. President, welcome to South Dakota, and thank you. Thank you for your efforts to bring this beautiful celebration of American independence, history, and liberty to fruition. Thank you for your efforts to remind the American people that they provide the consent of the governed on which the legitimate government depends. Ladies and gentlemen, President Donald Trump. <laughs> 